Hey, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to take apart, clean, and restore this PlayStation 2 Fat Edition because I picked it up online fairly cheap, but man, did it come disgusting. I mean, I tried blowing it out earlier. The vents were completely clogged, but I don't feel that this is clean enough. And also ordered a tray since it was missing. But let's go ahead and get right into it. We're gonna start off with a flathead screwdriver. And we're just gonna pop off these rubber feet. Now, the PlayStation 2 has four rubber feet on the outer side, and then hard plastic on the middle and on the outer edges. I know some PlayStations are a little bit different. Some don't have any of the screws here but in this case this one does so it looks like i have an additional six more and we'll just start with this one here and try to pop it off let me just grab a smaller flathead because that one appears to be a little too thick and it'll just pop right off like such and i'll go ahead and do it for the sides here It's a little finesse, but they come off. Just taking off the last two here. And the nice thing about working on the PS2 here is you don't need any of those fancy screw screwdrivers that are Torx bit or game bits. They're just normal Phillips head screwdrivers and if you have a garage with a toolbox you're more than likely going to have this tool so all we're doing here is taking all the screws off for the moment i'm just loosening this top portion off first now it does matter where your screws are going to go so i would carefully place them aside in the same pattern that you took them out because they are a little different as you can see and this one should be a long one so as you can see how i'm lining them up you want to do the same and then we'll go ahead and take off these right here like so, and we'll go ahead and remove them. I have a magnet on hand. It's really not necessary. It just kind of makes it quick and easy for me since I have one. Uh, you could just flip the PlayStation over to take the screws out. Now, before we open this, there's one last thing that you need to check. So for this PlayStation, as you can see, this was never opened, so it never had to be warranted. Now, Typically when you cut these, you void the warranty, but let's face it, these are no longer under warranty, so we have nothing to worry about. You're just gonna wanna take something sharp, trace it along the plastic, and make your cut. You can use anything sharp. Again, I just happen to have this in hand put that off to the side and now we are pretty much all set to go we have all the screws removed this part you want to be a little bit careful there is a ribbon cable on this side okay so when you open it open it towards the right and the ribbon cable will appear you want to be careful with this because it can break now in order to completely remove this let me set this down get a closer look here in order to remove this, there is an entire housing where the buttons live. All you have to do is pick at it and pull it upwards. And that whole assembly is going to come off together. 
I'll start it off with the flathead here. Once I've gotten it up, push that power button in just a bit. And there you go, comes right off. Look at that. That's actually not as bad as I thought this was going to be, but the rest I know is going to be kind of gross. I'm going to go ahead off camera and clean this with just some soap and water. You really don't need to remove this memory card plastic piece here. I don't think it's necessary if, as long as you have like an old toothbrush or a, a soft nylon brush, you should be able to clean that up easily. Also, if you have any scuff marks, like this one has just a few, not a lot. You can use a magic eraser to remove it. It's not going to probably remove all of it, but it's going to do a really good job to clean it up. But the rest of this looks kind of gross. Let's just take a quick look here. I don't know if that's pet hair or what. That fan is really bad. And I have no idea what that's going to look like. We're going to get to that in just a second. Taking a closer look. Yes. I'm glad we're opening this and getting it restored and cleaned up. Now the next thing we're going to do is remove the bottom cover. Okay, this, let me move it for you so you can actually see what I'm talking about. This piece right here, we're going to take this right off. Now again, just be careful when you're taking it apart that that void sticker, if it does exist, that you're careful to remove it because if you don't cut it correctly, it will provide some resistance. So this should just come right off. Okay, I'm gonna set this back down and take a look at this. Yeah, this looks pretty gross. This is pretty gross. We're definitely gonna clean this up. My plan with this PlayStation here is just to resell it. And I would not feel comfortable giving it to somebody or selling it to someone in this condition. So once again, off camera, I'm going to go ahead and clean that up with some soap and water. And now a word of caution at this point of the video, if you don't feel comfortable, if you're under the age of 18, if you have no experience with power supplies, again, if you don't feel comfortable with this, do not do this next steps. Do not follow these steps. This can cause some serious problems, bodily injury or harm you. Even though this is not plugged in, it is very much still carrying a lot of electricity in these capacitors, so you do not want to do this next step. Again, under the age, don't feel comfortable. You have no experience at this. Honestly, at this point, you could just use compressed air in a can like, like this here and just dust it off. But I'm going to go just a bit further because I really want to clean this fan. This fan is pretty nasty. It's also not going to be very efficient cooling uh, even though it's I cleared it up a little bit with that can I would feel more comfortable if I went in there and gave it a good cleaning so with this next step power supply plug and switch it just lifts right off <clears throat> this piece here I mean we can remove it for now this is the controller and the the memory card reader also, there is a screw right here retaining the fan. So we'll go ahead and remove that. We'll take the magnet, take it right off. Uh, there was a retaining clip here. I think I missed that part, but this just pops right off, okay? All right, sorry about that. I have a water pump that just turned on and it's really loud, so I didn't want to talk over it. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead, moving forward, and take this Phillips head screw off, which we're underneath the PlayStation now. This is the metal plate that protects the circuit board right here. Getting a better angle here, I'm gonna use this to point. This ribbon cable right here that's black is very delicate, and it's gonna pull straight out. Before you do that, though, you just wanna lift this brown piece up, and that's going to release it like so which will now allow us to remove this piece. And I'll go ahead and get this cleaned up. The contacts look a little bit dirty. And again, I don't wanna sell this in this condition. I wanna get this cleaned up. Obviously you don't wanna use soap and water. Uh, we're just gonna dust this off with a, a dry rag and we'll use some, some isopropyl alcohol to clean up some of these contacts and this will be good as new. I'm gonna set that off to the side and also do that off camera. Now that we have that off, 
I'm gonna go ahead and work on removing the DVD reader. And to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this metal plate, which is actually where a hard drive would slide in. If you wanted to add a hard drive, maybe run McMoot. Setting this off to the side, we're gonna go ahead and take this piece off. But before we do, I'm gonna use one of these plastic pry bars. Uh, they're pretty common when you are repairing phones. Uh, it's just a little bit more delicate than using metal. You don't wanna damage any of the parts that are here. And all I'm doing is prying this plug in an upwards motion, and it'll just come right off, as you can see. And once again, I'm just gonna set that right off to the side. In this step now, we can finally remove the DVD reader. I went ahead and did it because it's the same concept as up here at the top left. You lift up that retaining clip, the ribbon cable comes right off. And very carefully, if you just slide everything up and out of the way, if I could do this with one hand here, I'm gonna put that shielding off to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and put this to the side as well, carefully here. And we have our DVD reader. This has seen better days. I'm gonna just take this out. As you can see, it just broke easily. So we'll work on this in just a moment. I wanna go ahead and just continue removing what is left to remove off of the main console here. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this back. And we are finally at a point where we should be able to remove the fan. And in order to remove that, let me flip this around so you can see it. The fan is actually connected by this tiny plug right there. And this is as simple as pulling it straight out in that direction, okay? Um, you obviously wanna be careful, this is a very small wire, uh, but in doing so, it will allow you to easily clean the fans it'll just be, be more convenient for myself to remove that it, you can clean it by leaving it in place if you so choose to but me personally i'm going to remove that plug and i'm going to do that off camera and once i have this removed everything else can be wiped down in this area with a dry rag again don't mess with the power supply uh, it's not necessary if you want to take a compressed can and just spray this off give it a quick cleaning you can do so but i'm going to go ahead and clean all these parts off camera then we'll come back and we're going to work on this dvd reader next get that clean and then put everything back together so let me go ahead and clean these parts now we are back pretty much finished cleaning up the majority of the plastic it is already looking a lot better you want to let these air dry completely before you even think about putting this back together you don't want any water in here uh, this bottom piece had some scratches so i can't really do anything about that but look how much cleaner that is even the vents are spotless love it check this out look how shiny that is i don't even know if the camera really does it justice but we are talking night and day here now got the fan all cleaned up this one had a dust shield on here, a little dust shield right there. I took that off. Now, you don't have to have it. However, I took it off very carefully with a knife such as this, with the intent of getting it cleaned, which it looks like a million bucks now. And I'm going to add four very small dabs of hot glue. You can even use small dabs of super glue because that's all that was being held prior is in these four corners to put that piece back on. So I will do that off camera, but as you can see that, that fan looks so much better than before and it's gonna perform a lot better. This has all been cleaned up. The power, sub, the power supply here was just dusted off. So as everything else is drying, and oh, before I forget to mention, I also cleaned up these buttons here. The buttons get kind of grimy from pushing it repetitively. So these are now nice and clean. Now let's go ahead and set this off to the side here and dig into the DVD reader. Now the DVD reader 
Man, this is dirty. Should have one, two, three, four Phillips head screws on the top. We're gonna take these four off. We're gonna take the plate off. Let me go ahead and grab a smaller Phillips head screwdriver for these. There you go. All right. I know that was pretty corny. Anyways, go ahead and remove these four screws. There's one, two, three. Now you wanna be also cautious with working in this part of the video, which is why I'm mentioning it now. Hopefully you didn't skip ahead because the laser is delicate. You mess up the laser or any of the mechanics inside and it is kaput. To lift this cover up, there's a little notch on the bottom left here. Just slightly pull it out and you should have this just pop right off. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, it's pretty dirty. Up in here in the corners, a little bit in here. So here, I'm essentially just gonna take my Windex and I'm gonna spray just a little bit on my rag here. And what I'm going to do is just clean around the area and away from that laser. And you can see how much dust was in here just by looking at the rag. Do not wipe anything in this area. You wanna leave this laser absolutely alone once you've got all this cleaned up, then you can take yourself a Q-tip if and only if you feel comfortable with this next step. You wanna grab yourself some of your isopropyl alcohol. I just happened to pour it here in this little cap here. And you want to very gently wipe the top of the laser and clean it up. Again, it is very very delicate. And there you go. That is all said and done. Pretty much this is cleaned up. I wouldn't do anything else to it. I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe this off, finish wiping this off, off camera, and then we'll come back and reassemble all of this. We're back, it is all cleaned up now. Before you put everything back together, you wanna make sure everything is absolutely dry. And we're just gonna go ahead and reverse the steps and place those four screws back where they belong. And once we have everything back together again, we are going to plug this in and test it for the first time. Because I have not tested it yet, I just decided to make this video for all of you. Hopefully you find this video helpful if you do. Yeah, it would be appreciated if you leave a like and you know comment down below if you have any questions or if there's anything else you want to see next have any suggestions and i put all this back together okay so now that we have the four screws in place let's go ahead and set this off to the side here and we're going to bring the main console back okay I'm gonna go ahead and put this power supply plug and switch back in its place. It is that simple. In this particular model, it does not have any screws holding it in place. And now I'm gonna go ahead and glue this back on and then I'll be right back. And here you go. Just four small dabs of a hot glue gun. will hold this in place just fine. You can use super glue if you wanted to. I just happen to have a hot glue gun. Next, we're gonna go ahead and place this, this cover back on. It does go in this way only. So just take a good look at it. If this is the model that you have, it goes in this direction. That little indentation here keeps it from chafing on this thin wire. And once you have it in place, you're going to just snap it back in. As you can hear those two little clips snapped in perfectly and now this has been reassembled we're going to go ahead and place this back inside now it's going to be facing in this direction with the metal facing outward and then we're going to put this in 
and then flip it over and I'm going to show you where it gets plugged in if you happen to remove this. So once again, it's going in this direction here, slides right in. I'm going to go ahead and carefully pick this up. Always be mindful of this little power button assembly. You don't want to forget that it's there. And this is going to slide right into place. Let me just get a close up for you quickly. This piece right here, right there, that's just going to push straight into here. Just goes right into there. So I'll go ahead and do that now. If I had a third arm, I could potentially do it while holding the camera, but I can't do both. So there you have it. It's just that simple. Uh, hopefully that's in frame. Now we'll go ahead and take our DVD drive and install that back into place. We're essentially working backwards from how we disassembled it. And we'll go ahead and take this piece. Ribbon cable is gonna slide right through here. Okay, so you just wanna go ahead and run that ribbon cable right through there. You may have to grab it from the other side. And it is going to drop into place like so. Now before I flip it over and plug it in, I'm gonna go ahead and put the screws back into place just so that I'm not fumbling around with it or risk damaging it. I don't know what that was. We'll go ahead and put the two screws back. So there's one here on the left hand side. Okay. And then there's one right here towards the middle. You can see that. Right there. Now we don't have to worry about this moving anywhere. Obviously you wanna make sure it's facing the right way. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up really quickly. It's best to use a Q-tip for this, especially the PlayStation with all the grooves that it has. I don't wanna miss a spot on here. Again, I wouldn't feel comfortable selling this if it wasn't cleaned. I mean, that's just going to show you how much grime and dirt is on there. So we are gonna flip this over. And now we are presented with our ribbon cable. Before you plug this in, don't forget to put your shield back in, okay? It goes right here. There's nothing fancy or clips. It just, it just kind of floats there. You wanna lift that black retaining clip and slide your ribbon cable back in. Make sure it's in there firm and everything is even when you slide it in. Because if you don't put this in correctly, you'll run into issues. More particularly reading the disc. So you wanna make sure that is snug and in place. Now we can go ahead and take this piece, which is where your hard drive would go. If you had an expansion bay like this one here does, the, the PS2 FAT has it. And this is just gonna be pushed straight down, just like so, and now it is in place. No problem there. The next step is reinstalling our controller and memory card reader. We're gonna do that now, so let's flip this over. Um, before we do that, actually, let's just, let's just put this cover back on. And if you remember, this particular piece here was being held by just one screw. It's also indicated here by an arrow. Let's get a close up of that. That means that there's only one screw that needs to be in place. So we'll go ahead and take our Phillips head screwdriver, which is right here. Sorry for the shaking camera. And reinstall that screw back in place. And that's simply just holding down this, this plate. Now we can flip this over again. And I'm gonna do it about right here so you can kind of visually see what's going on. In this area, there's a bunch of slots. You're gonna choose the greater slot here, the one that's the biggest. Obviously, you wanna make sure this is facing the right way and in the right direction. The controllers that get plugged in go facing towards the bottom. And trying to do this with one hand, you're gonna take the ribbon cable and just feed it through and plug it in right there. 
Then what I'm actually gonna do is I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the screw back here so this doesn't move anymore. And just like we did before on this ribbon cable, make sure that retainer clip is facing up, slide it in, make sure it's even, and then clamp it down and that is all set. So I'll go ahead and do that now and we'll move on to the next step. All right, now that we have that plugged back in, we can go ahead and put our shielding back. There's a little plastic piece here and here and that's just gonna guide this plate back in place so you know exactly where it goes. Once again, this is only being held by one screw, if you remember in the beginning of the video and is also indicated once again by an arrow. So we'll go ahead and replace that screw so that's not gonna fall over or fall off when I turn this over. We're going to set that right there. And before I move on to the next part, I actually just saw that I missed a small area. Just want to get that cleaned up real quick. It'll take about a, a moment. Also gives you kind of an idea on how, how to clean it. And I mean, look how many Q-tips we went through. This thing was really dirty. Now again, before you move on to the next step, you wanna make sure this is absolutely dry. This one is, it's had time to dry. So we're gonna go ahead and place this down here on the bottom. Kind of line it up as best as you can. And we're gonna pick this up and just drop it right in. And it should fall into place. There you go, everything lines up here. Now, don't forget this little retaining clip, if yours does have it, it goes on this side, okay? And there is a notch, so you know exactly where this goes. Right here, there's the notch, there's two of them, but you, you wanna do it on this side. Um, so we'll go ahead and place that back. I don't wanna put it at an angle, because it is a clip. Push that back into place, kind of bend it down. Bend it down a little bit. It doesn't want to make con. You want it to make sure it's making contact with your fan here. It looks like it was a bit forward from the grooves, but it is fine as long as it's touching the fan. So there you go. I put that back. Now we are pretty much all set here, except for this last screw. This last screw is what holds. The fan in place so we're gonna go ahead and place that screw right back in there and that's gonna hold it and there you go now we don't have any screws left over kind of look around just make sure <laughs> kind of always happens right when you have an entire console laptop or whatever taken apart you put everything back and you always have that one screw left over you're like where does that go must not be necessary Let's not have that happen in this video, right? Okay. And this one is dry. Yep, completely dry. Make sure it's facing the right way. Here's the power and reset button. You can see it on camera there. You want it facing in this direction and then we're gonna put this back. Okay, there we go. It's a little tricky to do this without getting my, my head all in the frame. But to give you an example, or to show you exactly how this is going back in, there's there's these little guide, plastic guides that will, f will make sure this is in properly. And you are putting it upside down because when you turn this around, then it'll be right side up. And now we will go ahead and close this up. You wanna install this at a bit of an angle facing this way, this side higher, because don't forget you have your DVD drive there. So you just want it to get to fit right into place and kind of do a quick inspection, make sure nothing's being pinched before we close it up. And everything went back in very smoothly. Now remember we had all this lined up so we knew where everything goes. So just so you know, this is the long one, this is the long one, and then the rest of the shorter ones are gonna go here. So if you want to follow along, along with these four here, I'm just going to set them into place and then I'll go ahead and screw them back into place and be right back. And now that everything is screwed back into place, you want to go ahead and take your rubber, your rubber ones. Okay, remember the rubber ones, so you don't put them in the wrong place first and they're going to go in the four, four outer 
most corners and then the hard plastic ones will just snap right back into place in the rest of the remaining holes. And let me tell you something. I wish all systems were as easy as this to work on. I mean, there's other ones that are easy, but it's just nice that back then they didn't make it so difficult to fix them up and take them apart. Yeah. And that's it. Now we're just gonna cut to testing this out, but it already looks so much better than it did before. This is already looking so much better. So let's go ahead and cut to testing this out. All right, here we are, moment of truth. We're gonna go ahead, power this back on. We have a standby light, which is good. Go ahead and we'll just turn it on first. You're not gonna hear any audio because it's just plugged into my computer monitor at the moment. Oh, this is good news. If you notice any shaking in the video right here, that's a, an HDMI converter that I have. I just need to replace it. But let's go ahead and test the first one out. We are testing a blue backed CD. So the blue, if you weren't aware of this, is a different type of disc, which is just a normal disc. And the PlayStation Laser has actually two. One is to read the CDs and then one is to read DVDs. So once we test to see if that is working, we'll go ahead and pop in a normal DVD just to see if it's reading both. That is an excellent sign. Again, there's no audio, so I apologize for that. But I also wouldn't want to get demonetized for music playing in the background. YouTube can be kind of strict on that. All right, let's see here. Bad news is the controller does not seem to be working. This is the one that it came with. So I'm probably going to have to grab one of mine that are in working condition. So let me go ahead and grab that. Okay, so here's one that is known to be working. You get the light on. So it looks like the one that it came with is gonna have to be repaired. It's probably gonna be a separate video. Go ahead and press X. And look at that, it is working. So let's go ahead and just do one more and make sure that the other one is working. Pop this back in. I'm also gonna read a memory card, make sure that it's working. So we'll go ahead and browse. And it is reading the memory card, so we know that not only is the controller working, the memory card is reading perfectly. There you go. That's also a good sign. We make it to the final start screen. I am confident that this is working. I'll do further testing off camera, but I'd say this was a successful breakdown cleaning restoring it and putting it back together again if you found this video helpful please leave a like down below that would be much appreciated and if you have any suggestions or questions just go ahead and leave them down in the comments below i typically answer all the comments and uh, i'll catch you all in the next video thanks for watching